Hello everyone, welcome back uh, to Leo's History as always, and to uh, The Forgotten City, and please give a very warm welcome again to our guest, uh, Dr. Richard Cole. Hi everyone. If you missed last stream, uh, Richard is a postdoctoral research researcher at the University of Bristol specializing in classics and VR, which is incredibly cool. Uh, and I am so grateful that uh, he's agreed to come back for the rest of this playthrough. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, it was it was so fun last week. We covered so much ground, uh, even immediately in just like a couple hours of playthrough. And I just want to, I think, start off with a tiny bit of a recap in case of people didn't um, make it uh, to that stream because, I mean, we talked about a lot of stuff. Right, I think right. The biggest thing is we looked at basically right the Forgotten City's well city and the way it constructs its Romanness because it's nominally set in the first century, although we are a time traveler from the year of our Lord twenty twenty one, and we let's see um, got assassinated intentionally uh, stole some money to cause the apocalypse. Uh, watched a Decurion really drink the Romanitas Kool-Aid and just be like, yeah, Rome's obviously better. We only enslave people instead of putting them on death row. Totally that's fine. Uh, and then also, though, we saw this really, really, really diverse, tightly interconnected microcosm of first century Roman society, and it is so exciting. Also, we now have Very like, summary. we have like 5,000 denarii, which means we can actually start making progress on some storylines. We still need to find a bow, though. We need to find this weapon, a weapon in this world without weapons. And I can't I'm, give away any spoilers I'm despite sure having that... played the game already. Exactly. Uh, also, yeah, the whole gimmick here uh, is, of course, that Richard has played the game all the way through already, uh, and I have not played it at all. This is my true first playthrough, so we are trying to avoid spoilers for me, but also uh, have that perspective on the game in order to be able to talk about it effectively. I am so excited. And to everyone who's filtering in, hello and welcome, and I uh, hope you will enjoy this as much as I am, because God, this past week I have thought about so many different, like, theory things regarding like agency, diversity, gender, all that stuff, and it's so exciting uh, to think about it in context of this game. I don't think we'll get into some of that. It definitely breaks down some of the, the typical representations, both of historical characters generally in video games, but um, also characters generally in video games. Yeah, and specifically I think on the most microscopic level of Romanness in video games. Because, right, I mean, my immediate instinct when you say Roman video game is Total War. Right, that, I mean, your mileage probably may differ, but, right, I immediately go Total War. Or, like, Rise Son of Rome. Or Imperator Rome. Or any of these games that all really focus on the Legion as an entity of consequence. It is quite interesting that, generally speaking, Greece, perhaps because of its mythic background and legacy and kind of strong characterization of, you know, through epic tragedy, yeah. um, it already has a space in gaming that exceeds um, the strategy games. I mean, I've, I've traced this in a recent chapter that you kind of look at the historic mode, the mythic mode in gaming, and Greece mm -hmm. appears in both early yes. on. But Rome dominates the strategy absolutely, and obviously there's political reasons for that in terms of the fact that it fits that sort of game very well in the kind of imperial expansion conquest mode um, and, and everything that it just sort of maps well onto that. But, but it is interesting that Rome hasn't offered seemingly yet so many possibilities for creativity in terms of storytelling. Yeah, because um, Rise on the Rome is actually quite a step backwards <laughs> in that regard. <laughs> um, but you've, you know, this, this is one of those really, really interesting examples where that period seems to just sort of spark a, an interesting creative turn, um, like it has done in some historical novels actually. 
and yeah. sometimes in film as well. Yeah, uh, actually, could you elaborate on that? I'm not super familiar with those spaces. So, I was in historical novels, um, and my PhD <laughs> happened to be looking at fiction set in, in, in uh, late antiquity, sort of the late Roman um, Empire, so I'm quite familiar with that, um, and that space offered writers quite an interesting scope, I think, for, for challenging some of the typical narratives set in kind of early Imperial Rome and sort of from Caesar onwards, um, where it's again typically that kind of expansion, conquest, great man sort of theory of history mm -hmm. filtered through various um, contemporary receptions. But late antiquity was quite unique because it has these sort of quite interesting figures, religiously um, interesting figures like Constantine the Great, the Emperor Julian. So you, you get fiction sort of centers around those characters, but rather than thinking kind of great manny, it sort of tends to tell more nuanced stories about religious change in Rome and how that mm -hmm. potentially maps onto the contemporary world where Julian acts as this kind of interesting figure that tries to make the, the empire pagan again and then saw that he's also seen kind of an, an enlightenment figure today um, through through that sort of fictional lens or you get Constantine as this kind of uh, you know, great figure in terms mm -hmm. of, the, the sort of you know, championing Christianity so there's, there's more nuance there um, film I mean can't not talk about Gladiator, but that revitalizes a whole mode of epic uh, yeah. cinema um, through, again, a very particular Roman lens and then leads to its own receptions. And then you get sort of challenges to that, the challenge to the kind of marble Rome, sort of imperial Rome image through things like the TV series Rome. Um, and then and, and then that set gets reused in later sort of filmic adaptations uh, like Pompeii. So you get, you, you get interesting work being done in that space imaginatively as well um, this is the first time I've seen sort of characterization and Rome being merged together through a kind of gaming mechanic yeah um, it really opens up questions about you know, what's interesting about Rome in this period of history and what's interesting about Rome generally you know, sort of across um, different cultures and, and, and how that's been received so it's it's a particularly interesting example that's come out at a, a really good time I think in, in relation to other um, you know, games in this in this period mm -hmm. yeah I I totally agree uh, I, but really this is a game that pulls really I think a big step forward it's like there's nothing else said in Rome like it in a very meaningful way and right, this is right in the period. The thing I love about it from a setting side is that this is right in the period that all the strategy games love so much. Right, this is the reign of Nero. We are decades away from the height of the Roman Empire. And it takes a big step back from that in terms of bringing it down to that kind of, to, to, to actually what scholarship has been trying to focus on really in, in, in Rome for, for quite some time now, sort of you know, the, the, the level of the individual their citizen to, to yeah. the, 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 the stories of their world has become quite a, a, a popular focus in, in academic work um, but fiction tends to track academic work quite quite late yeah. often, um, decades intentionally late. and but but also that that's interesting in itself and I, I don't think it, one needs to <laughs> keep step with the other necessarily because they're different mediums doing different things but it is interesting here that they have kind of overlapped yeah in their interests and I love that they overlap in a way that like acknowledges right the empire's reach right like this game is not immune to the imperialism of romanitas because we've got characters from britannia and persia and egypt just hanging out in rome like they should be who are not all like oh my god rome is amazing <laughs> they're not all oh my god rome is amazing but right so it's like this is it's engaging with discourse with all of these imperial expansionist narratives and then brings it right back down in a way that i just i adore yeah again it, it flips that sort of romanization approach to thinking about rome on its head and instead thinks about it from you know the perspective of individual citizens adopting the culture of rome for survival for mm -hmm. political commercial gain and for active critique because right one thing we also talked about last week was the anachronism that is all over the place in this city's architecture stylings 
basically right everything is super conscious about the fact that this is a game in 2021 where you are a person from 2021 sent back Hello. to the first century and with a bunch of perceptions about what we think Rome is. And then it allows through the sort of you know, the dialogue mechanic for us to investigate that. Um, you know, in that they, there's that sort of fancy word um, that's sometimes deployed in this context to sort of think about the conversations that take place and the dialogue that's there between it, the ancient and modern in fiction. But here, <laughs> as games often do, they make literal a metaphor yes. so rather than an author having a conversation with an ancient author in that sort of being part of the reception of, of, a, of a piece mm -hmm. of fiction or a piece of literature that you actually are engaging in dialogue. Obviously, it's still scripted, but you have agency within that, the choices you make. So I'd, I'd really like the fact that this game makes makes the sort of metaphor of dialogue with the ancient world a, a core mechanic of, mm -hmm. of this game. Yeah. Uh, I'm Alec from chat, uh, Xiao. The game came out in the back half of 2021, but it started life as a Skyrim mod. Uh, so it, the Skyrim mod version is quite a few years old, but like, it was completely rebuilt as a historical game. So hey, In talking of gaming history, I think it's interesting that God. Europa Barborum came out of Total War was a yep. more accurate, you know, historical version. It seems like Rome both spawns interesting games, but also spawns interesting mods. Yes. <laughs> oh, those, yes. Games oh, God. Greece don't do that, but... But you're right. Oh, God, that, that's the entire other thought that I hadn't had before. That now so my Age mind is just racing. <laughs> Age of Empires, I suppose, does the same, because you've got the Rome expansion that spawned mods, but the original base game did as well, and that was more Greek. In yeah. Inverted commas. Um... Well, I think the, the Europa Barborum and this one being both standalone games very successful in their own right. It's interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Is that, I wonder if that, is that just because Rome is so, like, well known? Or is there something else about Roman society that makes it use... Let me turn that on its head, actually. Because the other potential, I think, is not that Roman society is useful, but that games already implicitly draw on Roman understandings of imperial conquest in so much of their stuff that it's easy to adapt games into Roman settings. I think that's right, definitely. I think there's also something going on again in the history of gaming where Greece provides a very fertile ground for lots of gaming companies to develop lots of different types of games and types of approaches from the very heavily mythic you know, God of War, etc. Um, you know, the recent Im Immortals Phoenix Rising to, to kind of you know, more strategic games like Age of Empires. But you, I think Rome hasn't been experimented with as much, like we said, so there's more space for creative scope. I also think that there's something interesting going on, like with fiction, where if a historical novelist got something wrong, especially in a Roman novel, like they got the name for a Roman spear wrong, people would come down on them like a ton of bricks. Yeah, there is a sense there that Rome has quite a kind of following. I remember the Total War Rome developers got harassed for having the wrong number of straps on a Kalida. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There, there, there is this sense that there's a bit of a kind of armchair historical following for Roman. I don't mean that in any kind of critical way. I just think that that, that is the kind of... Rome evokes that sort of in, 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 in certain people who, who are interested in that period of history. And so Europa Barborum comes out, I think, of... of, of I'm not saying the modders of these people, but they, it comes out of that space where, you know, this is a game, but it's not as accurate as it could be. Let's make it more accurate. Yeah. This one, though, is different because... It wasn't trying to make. You know, it came out of a fantasy game, so I find that uh -huh. so interesting because, again, it like came said, out of Greece a comes, medieval fantasy game. Fantasy at that. game, yeah. Like Greece seems to generate those kinds of receptions itself. You know, the, the, the ideas of Greece and myths, but the Rome. It's interesting that they, they chose that as the primary setting here. I'm really, really interested in that. Yeah, definitely something we can keep an eye on uh, as we're going through this. But I think it's time to hop into the game and. Um, you know, uh, immediately go purchase uh, a bottle of antidote, because we have plenty of money to go do that. So, tab over here, and continue. Also, Amit, I appreciate you stopping by, even though you cannot stay.
And loading screens. Hooray! As always, chat, if you have questions for Richard or uh, me or things you want us to talk about, please do throw them in. We are happy to try and talk about it. Medieval Mechanism. Fantasy Games said a city of the Fantasy Worlds Mechanist Race. True. Also, right, Rome as the engineers of the ancient world. There's a strong overlap there, girl. Uh, oh, Adam, just a note, it's not coming right. through on I'm my... Hilarious. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, give me just a sec, then. Uh, Discord, thank you. If you could do the thing, that would be cool. Is it... Doing it again? Is it doing it now, or is it still not coming through? Still not coming through, sorry about this. Yeah, is it not... Is it that the screen itself is not coming through, or just that there's no audio? There was audio, now there's none. I mean, I was out of tab, Just the screen. So. It's just the screen, then. Amazing. Okay, uh, let's stop that and then start that back up and we'll make this work. Uh, technical difficulties, Discord is um, betraying us. So... Let's try that again. Does that work better? Not coming through yet. Boom. Oh uh, boy. Okay. Uh, technical difficulties chat. We're going to hop off the call and then we'll reload it. Uh, so, cameras are going to go wonky for a second, but we will be back in just a second. As usual, Discord has betrayed us. Alright. So I'm just going to hop off the call and then we'll start back up reshare. All right, cameras are live again, and the game is theoretically live again. Hooray! Technical difficulties have been solved. Yes, so chat, this was a Discord side issue, not a stream side issue. So you all saw nothing wrong, but we now, I think, have everything right. Mm-hmm. That's all right, friend. Everyone's welcome here. Seriously, what's, what's today's date? We sort of lose track of the date down here, but it feels like the beginning of spring to me, so I'd say early March? It's 817 AUC. Sorry, you look confused. 817 years since okay. the founding of Rome. Which part of the empire are you from, exactly? <laughs> oh yes, question. <laughs> I like that a lot. Let's go. Archaeologist insights, so 65 CE. Yeah, that'd be right, because isn't it 752 BC is the like ostensible founding of Rome? Yep. Something with something in there. Proud that. Yeah. CE. Also, uh, we are progressive and modern and use common era instead of Anno Domini. Despite not, not that not being a meaningful difference. You seem very <laughs> lost and in more ways than one. So let me make this nice and simple for you. Live by our law here. Yes, Galerius, I understand. Just fine. I like that the modern, the modern sense of time is here. The time loop is here, and the ancient Roman sense of time is all the here as well. Exactly. Oh, it's so good. It's so good that the way that it's playing with. Even the small things, right? Yeah. The idea that we, like, don't need, uh, that there's all these little ways that we would just not fit in, down to the very way we, we reckon the day, the month, the year, time. And we just don't usually get engagement with that? No, and, and I suppose it's perhaps not surprising of a game like this it's so interested in time um to play with different cultures perception of time and dating but, um, but actually it, yeah, it makes perfect sense yes Salve, stranger, and welcome to our idyllic little slice of the empire i'm Dacius. and well uh, so yeah we are 
We are in an underground city off of the Tiber, but Galerius is from Roman Britain and was brought to Rome in enslavement. Okay. Fine. You have it. I'm impressed. Ooh, a linguistics question. What if anything is the difference between salve uh, and ave? Can I help you with anything else? Uh. Do you know what I'm here? If you're desperate, I'm so my understanding is that salve is our much more equal greeting. Uh, literally, it's greetings versus hail. So, uh, awe is something you would use as sort of in a formal situation to your superior. Salve is a much more hello. I'll defer to you on that one because linguistics has never been my strong point. I'm a Fair. Historian through, cultural historian through and through. Oh god, I, I started in linguistics, I have a did it in undergrad, and then decided I actually didn't like philology that much. Because we have to, uh, you know, you have to be really into manuscript studies and dealing with scribal variation to do pre-modern philology. And I am not into either of those things. <laughs> I had a great time for them, but I never had a skill either, so it was always a... Always culture and oh, history yeah. for me. Old Asius has got your back though. You mean how did I end up here? That is a lengthy tale. Uh-huh. Maybe some other time. Suit yourself. Okay. Very well. I need to uh Yulia. Yulia, hello. Uh Hello. Lucretia. What are you doing in here? Can't you see this woman is dying? She's been poisoned. Yes. She needs the resin of a plant called uh -huh. Sinium, but that Kulas Kubolates Decius won't give it to me. Uh huh. Yeah. What? Quick, give it here. Yulia, Yulia, you need to swallow this. Here, let me help you. Hooray! Thank you, subtitles. By the way. Hopefully, in a moment, she should be able to breathe normally. That was extraordinary. How did you know she needed this exact thing? Uh, this exact moment. Are you some kind of oracle? But how could you know she needed this exact medicine? And how did you even get it? I guess it doesn't matter. You just saved a person's life. And you should be proud of yourself. She might even be able to thank you herself in a few moments. And maybe she can tell us who poisoned her. And who she meant when she was muttering about that snake's cruel black eyes. In the meantime, I'm happy to help you with whatever it is you need. Amazing. It's interesting they call you an oracle in this. It's, it's yes. the one thing that I, I think it it works. It has to be that because the contemporary idea of an oracle is someone who just knows everything that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But actually, sort of in, 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 in antiquity terms, I don't. I, don't, I think they slightly fudge it. Because oracles weren't about that kind of idea of understanding exactly what was about to happen. It was much, much more nuanced than that. Mm -hmm. But it, it does work in this game. I'm not, I'm not saying it doesn't. Yeah, uh, I mean that's definitely just a, uh, a convenience I think, and very much in yeah. line with like pop fantasy ideas of oracles and the Hall of exactly. Prophecy and the all things are destined, which. Yeah. Does it's functional, but I agree with you. Uh, fate in a Greek and Roman context is much weirder. Yeah, exactly. And the kind of stuff we've been doing with the virtual reality oracle is really trying to get to grips with you know how that kind of religious experience worked. And it's um, if you could even call it that, it's you know, I think there's a lot. But what's interesting is when games like this raise those questions because then you can start pushing and going, okay, that's you know, th this was a really, really interesting mm -hmm. bit of the ancient world. Um, it, it works here out of necessity, I think. Yeah. Sure. What do you want I want to uh, get through these dialogues, but then uh, you are the expert here on this, uh, so yeah, I want to elaborate a bit more on that uh, as soon as we get through these. Okay. Uh, Goodbye. 
Thanks again for saving Yulia's life. Apollo smiles upon you. Okay. Hello, Yulia. You're not looking too good. But yes, uh, do you want... For people in chat who do not know, and also me, because I have... My understanding of fate in Roman context is mostly from reading the Aeneid. Uh, so, do you okay. want to uh, potentially elaborate a little bit on how uh, oracles and the idea of like foreknowledge sort of work? Oh, sure, at least at the relatively 30 second version. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll give a very, very garbled quick version, but it's, it's essentially, you know, about, about risk and understanding how you factor that in, in a context where you can ask the gods for advice about something, but it's not about finding out the exact answer. And even if you're given an answer and that turns out to be wrong, you know, it's not the gods that are wrong, it's your interpretation of that answer that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And again, we don't exactly know how answers are often delivered by oracles. They perhaps were very simple, yes, no kind of things, either or, or they were literary things, but that's, that, it's hard to know when that was sort of formulated. So this sort of sense of an oracle knowing exactly what's going to happen and giving you exactly the right information is a modern interpretation of, a, of an oracle. Sure. Um, and and the, an ancient one functioned a little bit more like a horoscopy kind of <laughs> example to, to use a very, very sort of... Um, of crass comparison there but um yeah so it's just it's one of those interesting things that the game chooses to to use a modern interpretation but in so doing kind of fudges the ancient conceptions a bit yeah uh actually we'll talk to yulia later now that she's safe uh i want to just wander around see what else is around here um the thing that strikes me as potentially referential here uh is that the Right, it's a very mythic understanding of fate, then, uh, in that, right, where in an actual religious context, an oracle doesn't know what's, or will answer in such a way as to leave it open to human interpretation. Uh, yeah. They don't but, know what's going to happen. Exactly, but the gods supposedly do, right? Uh, either Apollo knows, or Fata knows. Or Zeus or whoever, yeah. If you're, yeah, if you're right. That there yeah. are some collection of gods who, in some way, meaningfully prefigure and affect things. And while they don't have perfect agency, they do have significant agency and foreknowledge. And, and so. It's interesting how that, that's then passed on you. Is it passed on through entrails, which it was at Olympia? Is it passed on through a priestess, like the Pythia at Delphi? Is it passed on through an oak tree, like at Dodona? There's, there's all sorts of interest. I mean, they're all Greek examples, but it. You know, it is interesting that, yeah, it, it's, it's not as simple as one person knows everything that's going to happen. Exactly. And relatively importantly, uh, right, the imperfect reception of agency and the imperfect reception of foreknowledge is one that I think is really juicy in the context of this game. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I know a colleague of mine who works on kind of sideways reception of the ancient world or sort of um, uh, or even or was, how do they term it um, kind of like receptions that may not have been entirely conscious or intentional mm -hmm. and how that works because we often tend to look at the kind of you know here's an example of this this is a reception of this and draw us a very exact relationship there but, but I suppose this oracle question here is quite interesting because it is one of those ones that's right in a modern term and in a sort of pop culture term and then sort of you know, slightly misses some of the I, I love that there's garum all over this world <laughs> it's so much fun god uh, i love i love the garum bottles but yeah that's a, a fermented fish sauce for anyone that uh needs the context there it's great uh right it's so yeah. It's so good, right? It's such a complicated thing, and I love the idea of unintentional receptions, because this is an unintentional... In some ways, right, there is a lot of unintentional reception underpinning this deliberate reception in the game. And, yeah, because right, even like here, but with this, this arch is a good example, because it's, it's actually, uh, I think most examples of the four-way arch 
are quite late, so mm -hmm. 200 AD. Um, it's not the kind of early triumphal arches, but it's necessary for this game for the way it's situated. It's exactly. um, the forum and everything. Uh, and right, the Oracle example is a really great one of not not necessarily being conscious of exactly what it's drawing on or the exact chain of transmission and then in that being interesting in and of itself God, yeah it's and he's uh... aware that oracles were places to seek knowledge of the future mm -hmm. in some shape or form so in the sense that again it's thinking about um yeah impossible knowledge and it does get it it does tie that idea of the time loop nicely to kind of you know ancient examples of impossible knowledge yes god and that's why i never get angry at, at sort of you know, absolutely inaccuracies exactly because it's, sometimes you can do a lot of work with um examples like this that are quite rich exactly and it's also just less less fun right getting mad at it is a when the game is making claims to being richly detailed, accurate, blah blah blah, then it's really fun then to get mad at different. it. Yeah. When, when the game is making no such claims, and you're able to do interesting work on transmission, and build together possible chains of transmission, it's just so much more f exciting to explore all the maybes. Definitely. Oh. I'd have a chat to her, she's a really interesting character. Yes. Wow, uh, that sure was voice acting. That almost sounded like text-to-speech voice acting. <laughs> Oof. Oh my. I take it people are quite direct where you're from. There we go, now there's emotion. Quite charming in its own way. Usually, however, you yes! I was hoping! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> There's 40 people, or 23 people in this world. Just chill. <laughs> Again, sort of customs and norms. Amazing. Script writing is just brilliant here, I think. Oh, it's... I love that. And also, the moment she mentioned Vesta, I was like, wait, is she supposed to be a priestess? Because not exactly a god you hear referenced a lot outside of the context of the Vestal Virgins and the Flame of Vesta in the Forum of Rome. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Another person who has been thrown down here the exact same way? Right now, that's all. <laughs> we're working on it. <laughs> I think we'll need at least a few to ensure we're not just seeing coincidences. Asking people how they wound up here. I don't want us to rush to any conclusions yet. Livia's fate weighs heavily on my mind and dictates we should be sure. Yes, you should ask the others first. Nomination. 
all of the male citizens who are willing and able to attend. Unless they're running, of course. Well, you're not a citizen yet. So, no, I'm afraid not. Okay. If it's any consolation, there are other ways to influence the outcome of an election. <laughs> Using Th thank you. Okay. I'm responsible for announcing it and making sure the procedures are followed. We could not make hilarious, but I feel like that's a bad idea right now. Oh, we've we've got to hear Ovid. <laughs> we, we've got to hear. Though I'm not sure they would consider Ovid all that great. I don't know. This is long enough after he dies that I'm not super sure. But you know, there was a whole being exiled to the Black Sea part. Yep. Oh, okay. Philemon. We love it. Realizing only a select few possess such powers, says to her husband, Philemon, I think these men are gods in disguise. Immediately, the couple begins apologizing for offering such coarse wine, and the vagrants metamorphosize and reveal themselves to be Jupiter, the king of the gods, and Mercury, mm -hmm. the trickster god. They confide they didn't mind the meager offerings. They were just pleased that someone in the town offered them hospitality. Mm -hmm. Then Jupiter says to them, You have passed our test, but everyone else in this city failed, so we are going to destroy this place and everyone well. in it, except you, and we will grant a wish. So old Borsis and Philemon escape up into the mountains safely, and they receive their wish, which is for eternity together. Meanwhile, Jupiter carries through with his threat and wipes that city off the map. Some say the moral of that story is that we must all honor the sacred rituals of guest friendship, the reciprocal obligations owed between hosts and guests. But I like to think it's that we should always show compassion for those less fortunate than ourselves. Or, <laughs> or, uh, Ovid's broader theme of that the gods are, uh, petty, and wildly neglectful, and will murder you for no reason. <laughs> I like that, they, that she presents the kind of the do it does, you know, the yeah, I do that you do. <laughs> you have Roman religion, which is, you know, very apparent and quite different from the sort of Greek idea. At the same time as she presents. Yes. The um, you know, Greek myth translated through Ovid um, and the stories that that has in relation to this place. Yes. Seems that way. I love. Then let's make sure he feels welcome, shall we? Of course, priestess. Amazing. I love that they actually have like a conversation when they're next to each other. Mm. Just a small, small little game design detail. Uh, I, I appreciate that they actually had a conversation. It feels like it's leaning towards that 
and I know there's been various experiments with it already recently, the, the kind of AI example of characters having you know, spontaneous conversations with each other that are entirely unscripted, um, which is still at a very early stage of being kind of commercially viable. But it... two, two chatbots put in a room together? Yes, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. That, that's potentially a super powerful tool, though. Importantly, I feel like you couldn't get consistent characters off of... No, so yeah, you, you'd lose that while gaining the kind of spontaneity, I suppose. But yeah. I, I love that this is all the Pompeii bread. Mm-hmm. And... Pretty much just... Well... A very modern recipe. <laughs> that is a reconstruction of the Pompeii bread. Because um, ingredient lists in a pre-modern recipe? Nah. Nah. You, you're just supposed to do cook. stuff until they cook, until it's done. You cook stuff until it's done, and then... I don't know. I, I've seen some, like, 14th, 15th century uh, recipe books that are, like, they're just bonkers because... The food somehow looks really good, but the way that you make it, it's like, I have no idea what any of these are, or how much of any of them there is. Absolutely. I mean, there's, I, I haven't seen it for a long while, but there's the Epicius, 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 Epicius yes. cookbook, but um, I can't remember how that's actually laid out. Definitely not as modern as, as that was, but... Um... What's in here? This door is locked. Well, that's fine, I guess. Exactly, right? I do like that it says a generous bridge, but more correct would be add enough water and more flour than water, bake until it's done, and then you have bread. It's been baked until it's done. Anyway, let's talk to Yulia now, now that she's, you know, not dead. How are you doing? Oh. Lucretia says I'm supposed to rest. As much as I'm grateful that you tried to help me, it's just not safe for me to talk about it. Please Understood. No more questions. Understood. Thank you. You mean my life story? Yes. Oh, well, I grew up as part of a big family in Rome. Me and three old Okay. Sisters. Our father found good husbands for my sisters, but I wasn't uh, cut out for that kind of life. Interesting. So he found me a job as a scribe for a prominent merchant. It was a good life for a while, until seven months ago when the fires came. My colleagues and I worked desperately to try to protect our warehouse. We must have had a hundred workers passing buckets of water, chanting prayers to Vulcan, but they fell on deaf ears. The fire was relentless, and it claimed everything, and everyone. Well, almost everyone. My employer told me to grab what valuables I could and flee to the Tiber with the crowds. I remember diving into the river, and then... The next thing I knew, I was waking up on the riverbank not far from here. It's um, it's just lovely how the Thank you. game even but engages with sort of issues that were sometimes I think mm -hmm. dying in that fire. A real concern a with ancient Romans fire was a major, Given major issue in the city. Since. Yeah, uh, uh, early fire brigades were established, I think, under Trajan, but, um, or at least they were discussed by. In the Trajan, so it's, it's you know obviously this they're referencing the big fire in Rome with Nero, but but you know there were regular fires in the Suburra and other parts of the city, um, so kind of these character backstories are not only rich but connect very you know, tightly to sort of concerns that citizens would have had. Definitely, and I love 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 the idea that the way that you are dealing with it is not just practical, but religious. 
right? The yeah. idea that to put out the fire, not only do you need buckets full of water, you also need prayers to Vulcan. <laughs> and it was like that that sort of small detail is right. I don't know if that's real. I mean we have no real way to construct whether that's actu actually a ritual or not. Uh, but it's one no, of those things that's a very plausible ritual. That's my understanding of Roman religion, which has been a little while since I looked at it. Again, you can't even call it Roman religion because there was no kind of concept of it in that way. But it, but in terms of the gods featuring in Roman life, it was featuring in every aspect of Roman life. Yeah. From names of streets and, and, and you know, the, the, the little ariums that they show here in mm -hmm. each of the houses through to, you know, before any decision was made, before any council was held. It, it, it was just part of the fabric of society and life. So here, seeing it name drop like that is, again, very accurate as far as I, I'm under, I understand the sort of situation. But exactly. And at least accurate in milieu, if not in precise detail. Yeah. Which and is... We can't necessarily know. Exactly. That, that, that's all that's important, right? The milieu is right, and it implies a bunch of depth on the interiority of these people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, nicely put. I can tell you, but it's a long story. I... All right. <laughs> I'd been here about... And then hmm, she has... When it dawned on me, I'd be trapped here for the rest of my life. I could hardly breathe, and I knew I had to get out somehow. So when my new friend Aurelia offered me a secret way out, I would have done anything. And then I learned her asking price. A thousand denarii. She was supposed to be my friend. I told her it would take me years to save up that much. Good so lord. she suggested I take out a loan from Maliolus. Good lord. And I did. Again, it's not just the, cit the city of Rome, it's the microcosm here. I like there's a microcosm of Roman society with the sort of patricians living up on the hill and the plebs finding their life yeah, exactly as it was in the city. So yes. I'd work off the debt over 30 years. But I figured and I'd be out of here so soon. This is not... It wouldn't matter. I paid Aurelia. And she gave me her so-called way out. Do you want to know what it was? Hemlock. Yep. Yep. Drink this, she said, and you'll be out of here in no time. Of course, I demanded my money back, but she refused. She pointed to a sign on her tavern saying, let the buyer beware. Oh, God. And she just looked at me with those cool black And then the poisoning. She laughed. She immediately told Maliolus I'd tried to escape without paying him back. Only, he didn't seem upset or surprised at all. In fact, he just thanked her. And that's when I realized the two of them had planned the whole thing from the beginning. That's At least you didn't have to pay Aurelia for, to find it out, because that's what I did. Uh-huh. And I'd signed over my labor for 30 years and there was nothing he could do. I thought about resisting too. But Maliola said if I didn't submit, I'd break the golden rule. And I couldn't be responsible for all those deaths. So he locked me in his villa, confiscated everything I owned as collateral, and made me wear immodest humiliating outfits while I worked day in, day out. His wife thought he was just as bad. She sent me to work on an endless... I need to try and meet them. Tasks. I'd be on my hands and knees, scrubbing the floor clean for hours. Only for her to pour slop on it and hiss, you missed a spot. Those two took everything from me. But they forgot to confiscate one thing. My hemlock. I just wanted it to be over. But it seems I messed that up too. Should have drunk all of it. I brought it on myself. 
I trusted one of the most callous human beings I've ever met, and tried to swindle the other. I don't know how I could have been so stupid. Mm -hmm. When I've recovered, I expect their thug Domitius will come for me. He'll escort me back to their villa, and I'll be right back where I started. Only this time, I won't be able to lull myself to sleep at night with the thought of a permanent solution. Honestly, it would have been better if the poison had been allowed to run its course. I doubt it. It seems this is the fate the gods have chosen for me. But hey look, there's fate think, again. At least mm. until someone breaks the golden rule. Huh. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad. A lot. But it doesn't matter. I... I made a suicide And there's the... Night. He's in exactly the same position as I am. Maliolus and Aurelia set the same trap for him a month after they did it to me. He and I are in this together. He's probably already thrown himself from the bluff into Maliolus's villa by now. If so... I'd never be able to live with myself, knowing I broke my promise to him. I doubt you could make it up to the bluff in time. I don't know who you are, or why you seem so determined to help me, but... Thank you. Let's see if we can make it up to the bluff in time. Definitely captures a, a real richness there to the life of someone. I mean, it's not... it's not... Same as being enslaved, because it's sort of they're framing it as debt bondage here, but it's you know it's it still is a, a sort of enslavement though. Yeah. Right, because obviously there's criminal slavery, there's military slavery, and then there's debt slavery in Roman society. Yeah. So, so it's it's capturing a version of it. Exactly. Hey, look, Sisyphus. Yep. I know. I love the little cameo. I love I love Sisyphus just like hanging out. Sisyphus cameo. Welcome to life under the golden rule. It's a ghastly thing, is it not? How are you faring so far? Actually, I... Alright, well, it was lovely to meet you. I look forward to getting to know you better over the coming months. And if you ever... Oh no! No! No, 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 no! Wolf Pierce, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Octavia, you seem you seem chill, but this is urgent. What? Why? Why would you want that? Why do you think I'm stuck for the well, rest of my life working for a man who treats me like an animal? I know, I know things are hard for you right now. They're hard for all of us. We're all in this together, obvious. Please, please just think this through. Octavia, shush. 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 No, bad friends, don't put too much pressure, confidence in me here. Thank you. And please, choose your words carefully. Let me guess. You're going to lecture me on how suicide is a crime against the Empire. I screwed up my life. That's what's wrong. I borrowed money and when I couldn't pay it back, I wound up in mm -hmm. bondage. I'll be stuck slaving away for that Culus Cumulatis Maliolus for the rest of my life. I am out. Wherever you are, so till of my love. I'm sorry. Opius, no! Well. I can't believe he went through with it. Gar. We were saying well, before we started the stream mm -hmm. how suicide isn't a sin under the golden rule. All these characters so I guess have agency God because is for it. It isn't mine. Yeah, they 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 do things even without 
even when you would like to be able to change the outcome, it's not like in other open world games or something where you can mostly amend the outcome or reload a save file to make it, you know, change the error. It, mm -hmm. it forces you to relive those those loops in order to work out how you can you know, make a difference. Exactly. I'll have to let everyone know what's happened. And I guess Maliolus will have to clean up the mess in his villa. It's of his own making, after all. And I'd best pray for poor old Gil. Agreed. Uh, well, this is actually a good time as we start making our way back down there, I guess, uh, to think about uh, agency and what that actually means in the context of this game. Because in some ways, right, the player is put in an incredibly privileged position relative to everyone else in this game, in that we are, you know, modern. We are... Absolutely. Right. We have both literal time travel powers, uh, the arguable blessing of the gods, and uh, literal... Uh, the entirety of perspective of, you know, modern history all supporting us. Absolutely, but even then, the game frustrates those powers and abilities and forces you to, to confront and face up to you know, the lives that these people are leaving and, and understanding their pains and concerns before you can you know, meaningfully progress. Yes. Which again, I think is a really nice use of a game mechanic tied in with um, the story they're telling here. Exactly. Like, at least at this point, right, uh, any attempt to turn that agency towards violence or typical player agent actions literally is a game over condition. Yeah, and it doesn't have the same problematic factor that I've, I've you know, known people have talked about in, in relation to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where not being able to go rampaging and pillaging it actually goes counter to what was you know, going to have been the case in that period. Uh -huh. So rather I... than kind of Un undoing the historical threads that tie tie these stories together, this one actually sort of tightens them. Yeah, I was actually going to think about it in less from AC Valhalla, more from Skyrim. Right. Right. In that, yeah, this absolutely. literally says all the behaviors that you do in Skyrim are bad, and you should not. <laughs> yeah, and points of yeah, absolutely. You could read the Golden Rule as a. <laughs> as a rule against the free roaming abilities in Grand Theft Auto onwards in open world. Exactly, right. If we steal things without people's permission, the game ends. If we... Or, be or better yet, it's not, it's not just end game. It's, it's... well... It forces you to reload a previous save kind of thing. Exactly. It forces you to start a new loop. All narrative mm. progress you have made, not the information, but all narrative progress you've made is... Uh, lost. And so you try again I mean, with yeah, more yeah, information, I, but and that is itself exactly. a kind of agent power. But you, I mean, as someone who's gone through the loops, you learn dealing isn't necessarily a helpful way either. So it's it's interesting that the game actually encourages you to to be very self-reflexive. Mm -hmm. That's what I was wondering, right? I was wondering about the suspicious glowy butterflies, and there must be some way to make them climbable. There is indeed. Because suspicious glowy butterflies were like screaming, this is a video game climb marker. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Maliolus isn't receiving visitors at the moment, it being election day. Oh. The name's Demetrius. You want to get to Maliolus? <laughs> Oh, interesting. Why? Because I am a gladiator. That's why. <laughs> you want to see me fight? Keep running your mouth, fatuous cunners. Uh huh. <laughs> Too bad. He's busy. Unless. Nah. Oh, good. We can bribe him to get in. Hooray. I'm glad you are. See, he's a busy man. And this is an important day. 
So I see a few different options here to get to Maliolus. Option one is we force the election and make him lose. So if you want to see him, I'll need something valuable in return. That's such an ugly <laughs> word. What I'm looking for is more of a, a tribute to me, your soon-to-be patron. Mm -hmm. And again, it ties in the idea of patronage, which is so central to Roman society, into a Just game mechanic. Exactly. Uh... Maliolus, of course. If old man Sentius can't even protect his own door, how can we trust him to protect us? I think it's gone on long enough. And Maliolus oh, that's bad. Once he's elected. <laughs> oh. He's going to announce it in his victory speech. Just you wait and see. Because if I tell you, and it gets that, it'll give old man Sentius a chance to interfere in our plans. And we can't have that. We've already lined up the votes he needs to win. Just stay out of our way. We won't have a problem. Alright. Alright. Whatever. Just remember, I'll be watching. Oh boy. There's well, a like lot. The voting system takes us back into a kind of you know, pre-Imperial Rome here as well, that this society that has come from an Imperial Rome has kind of regressed into a republic. Yeah. In some ways, I mean, obviously, it's got it's got like a magistrate, a single elected figure, but of course, magistrates were elected, and they did have a time limited term of office. That was the whole point, their imperium and everything. So it was. It is interesting how this little society has um, has gone on to model, not the Rome they came from. Yes. Another bit I think and of a deliberate anachronism for both narrative points and yeah. thematic ones. They're exactly, so yeah. deliberate about this. Well, I think... We must all be question marks? <laughs> uh... I think there's a hole in the floor. I think for this loop, there's a hole in the floor now. That is... Since we're here... Oof. Since we're here, random boss is picking some kind of battle. It's not in good condition. <laughs> I mean, again, the game draws in multiple vase traditions from kind of geometric period all the way through to... Yeah, they do. You know, Roman period, I like, again, the use of a kind of layered um, perception. Yes. Note from Yulia. Uh-huh, curse you to the depths. Yep. Pack out your levers in Tartaros for all eternity. As you do. All the Pompeian interior decoration. Yes. God, there's so much good visual stuff here. I mean, I totally get why their, uh, you know, city off the Tiber near Rome uh, is Pompeii. Because, of course, if you want prominent visuals that, uh, I guess, right, prominent, well preserved material Roman culture, it's Pompeii. Yeah, and Ostia, closer to Rome as well, but uh, we don't have the same sort of level of detail with the frescoes, I don't believe. Yep, uh, or Herculaneum. Yep, indeed. And the, so, all these destroyed cities, and sometimes dramatically destroyed cities, end up becoming really important for us. Definitely. Pompeii's a very strong presence here, I think. Yeah. But again, then it ties it to a much more human story rather than a kind of blue well, face, you know. What is the meaning of erupting this? mount, Vesuvius. Why do you have heterochromia? That was either extremely reckless or impressively clever. Well, why have you risked life and limb to see me? 
I'm Malion. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for this interruption, mm -hmm. I'd be practicing my victory speech for the election later today. I'm glad you asked. I'll finally restore freedom to this city by getting everyone killed. So many modern parallels. Yep. Yep, yep. Pay back control. Yep. By declaring there's no such thing Make the Forgotten City great again. Oh, uh, yes. Uh-huh. Wait, don't tell me you've fallen victim to that monstrous lie. Well... The person making a claim bears the onus of proving that claim. Can you do that? I can, but it's not... it wouldn't be pretty. <laughs> Nonsense. There's no way you can prove that. If it was real and you've seen someone break it, then you'd be dead already. Surely you're not one of those people who believes everything you read. <gasps> as if a lie could be transformed into the truth by the simple act of writing it down. Is that the perfect example of a sort of politician that uses a kind of Something. Sort of postmodern turn to be like, but you can't prove anything, therefore I'm right. <laughs> exactly. God, it's, I mean, simultaneously good historical notes, good commentary on games, and, you know, it's the game's privileging of written lore documents. Yes. And yeah. also unbelievably slimy. <laughs> Yep, appeal to the population. Yes, indeed. The freedom to do what they wish, as long as what they wish is be tricked into debt bondage to me. Yeah. What? Oh, oh, I see what's happening here. Another poor. Could, maybe if I can. Maybe he, if he conveniently trips, uh, he will into his broken pool and drowns. God, provenance? Really? Being incredibly slimy about the principles of provenance? Ah, oh. he's a really good. He's a really good example. He's a really good example of kind of this sort of critical thinking, misfiring that you get a lot in in sort of contemporary debates as well about you know, really complex issues that instead gets boiled down to this sort of skepticism, that then doesn't allow people to actually. <laughs> productively discuss issues. Yes. Also, Agalias, I think he is in- I completely forgot him that the cultist hunter assassin was in fact looking for a man with two different colored eyes. That's very well remembered. Well remembered. So, uh... You mean that the children's fate exploited by Sentius to scare us all into doing what he wants? I'm afraid not. We're stuck down here together, for better or worse. We're all going to have to make the best of it. Uh-huh. I'm Malios. Okay. Fair enough. I trust you can see through the door this time. Oh! Oh, now we just have the key. Oh, once we pick up yep. the once we ha once we pick up the key, we just have the key. Even though yep. the key presumably duplicates itself when we time travel. <laughs> Yes, I was going to say, try not to think about the physics of it. But now we just have the key. Thank you. Yoink. Thank you. Same as the Ophium. And the door is unlocked. Because I unlocked it. Yep. So the assassin can just get in. That would be one way to make- I mean, we'd all die, but that would be one way to get him out of the election. Because <laughs> of the nuclear option. <laughs> Look, sometimes we have to throw for content around here. <laughs> yes, yes, being respectful to uh, past people's historical agency and not being abusive to NPCs, but also throwing for content. We're finally alone. We have? Wait, if 
I understand correctly, uh -huh. someone is about to break the golden rule, mm -hmm. forcing me to create a portal mm -hmm. in time to bring you here. I must have entrusted you with figuring out who the culprit is. Don't it's literally everyone. Sentius, I have terrible news. It's literally everybody. <laughs> I broke it. <laughs> Twice. Uh, the, the first time I, I did fail to stop it from being broken. But all that matters now is that you make use of what you've learned and gathered. Well, I like how the game does a few different things to suggest that Sentius is relatively reliable. Uh, in that he, one, is tutorializes, right? He is our exposition. And two, he believes in this sincerely enough that he is willing to sacrifice his life to cause the whole thing. Yes, he's drunk yeah. the, Ro the Romanitas Kool-Aid, but uh, he... Yeah, I like how the game, the game really does make you consider each character's motivations and reasoning behind the decisions and the actions that they take. Mm -hmm. I can't think of many games that allow you to sort of think so richly about the inner lives of NPCs. Exactly. And right, we were talking about agency a moment ago, and I think that's part of the way of at least creating the illusion of things that are static code having agency is that they have Sextus these rich... So Perhaps it helps because we're not characterized so heavily. We are literally the modern inter interloper like you are in any historical game. Mm -hmm. But because that's kind of the point, you could sort of throw that one out a window and focus instead on all of the characters in the past. Yeah. Yeah, I, ooh, I, I super like that. Because right, role-playing games center the player. Right? They let you create whoever you want to be within this world. And this game is the inverted, right? Yeah, because rather than empathizing with the, your character, you're trying to empathize with every other character. Oh, I love that. And again, it draws me back to the point again of that this is a Skyrim mod. This is a mod of a game that unbelievably centers the player character as the super giga chosen one <laughs> who the world revolves around. And whose skill primarily resides in fighting, magic, stealing, exactly, basically, yeah. basically abusing the world, right? In a somewhat substantive way. It had here, to... Your skill is is empathy and problem solving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That it's... way, it kind of reminds me bizarrely of things like Portal, you know, games that really center on storytelling, problem solving, as opposed to kind of the, t the typical offering of games. Yeah. I mean, this is a puzzle game, right? This is a puzzle game yeah. where the puzzle is uh, people are messy. Mm. <laughs> yes. My men and I were at the Emporium in Rome as on a guard for and visiting now we get to hear another Rome similar thing on this. Now the port is usually bustling, uh -huh. but just as our guests arrived, Waves of people began running toward Did the river everyone here just die in the fires? In every direction. They were trying to escape a terrible fire. Unfortunately, the crowd sent my horse into a panic, and I remember it losing its footing by the water's edge. The next thing I knew, I was waking up on a riverbank not far from here in the company of some stranger. I went looking for my horse and discovered that lonely temple. Memory lapse. Everyone's unconscious. Everyone washes up on the river. Everyone meets a stranger. It's certainly not a coincidence. And also, uh, by the way, from these descriptions, he drowned. He fell in the Tiber and drowned. There's no. There's wearing full armor, tripping in a panic and stampede into the river. I don't believe. I don't believe anyone of this survived. It's like the Battle of the Milvian Bridge, <laughs> Constantine, most of the people. Exactly. Died not through the battle, but through drowning, yeah. Exactly. I, I like it. 
I've just been looking at the chat. I like how most people are also wargaming the options here. Yes. With the time loop. It's really nice. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm glad it lets you do that, because that is... It, on a practical level, it's really nice, because it punishes you for stealing. Or it makes stealing completely... Completely unimportant. Right, so... That turns it from being a, oh, I'm just doing it to try and get the resources to make through, to, no, you're making this choice. Right, yeah. you are making this choice to not have empathy for other people's material possessions. But then also, it creates such a low mechanical, practical need that you can, if you want to spend your way through the game, you are easily able to do so with little problem. Yes, yes, There's, there are more consequences to your actions than in a lot of games, and you can't easily circumvent them through normal cheating modes. Though, funny enough, time loops are a normal way of cheating. <laughs> in terms yeah. of save, was it, yeah. they call it save scumming? You yes. Know, constantly going back. Uh, um, or, or, you know, I do it all the time in Total War. Well, <laughs> right. Uh, you, there's a ton of games where saving creates dupe exploits. Right? Yeah, Literally, you can yeah. duplicate items by save loading after you've acquired items. Absolutely like Skyrim, right. Skyrim is the classic example of this. The speedrun dupes the katana. And Absolutely. then you go wail on people with the, the super anti-dragon dual wielding. That there is only one of in the world. God, reading this is just a critique of Skyrim. It's quite nice, isn't it? It goes so well, and it somehow is completely non non-intrusive on all of its historical layer critiques. Absolutely, because while, it, while you know, obviously it has that connection to Skyrim, it also is connecting itself to that rich reception of historical games as well. Exactly. It's... yay. Yeah. It's a cavalry officer. I had 30 men under my command. This was my uniform. As magistrate, I usually wear a toga, but today I may need to survive long enough to create the portal for you, so it's in Wow. I was elected seven months ago, uncontested because of my command experience. Since then, there's been growing agitation for another election. They're supposed to be annual, but I agreed to hold it sooner, hoping it would put faith. Unfortunately, it just seems to have emboldened certain elements instead. Uh-huh. Very well. Okay. Ask them. Okay. Good. Now. Uh, let's get back to it. We could... We could try and accuse someone. But I don't think we're going to. I feel like accusing people is not necessarily helpful, because what do you, what can you actually do? If you accuse someone, what do you actually do from that? Right, you can't arrest people. You can't... Have a look. Um, go down the forum, sorry. Hmm? Literally the opposite way. Yeah. This way? Uh, opposite. Opposite. <laughs> this way. Up this way. Yep. Straight down the end. We could open up the... Ah, yes, George, yes. Uh, I mean, there is... This have is... A, have a look to the left. Yeah, so don't go straight down. Just to the left and then to the right. That building just that you're basically facing there. Yep. Perfect. Oh, there's jail. Gotcha. Hello? My name's Doobin. I live here now because I got in trouble with them. They said they had to lock me up. Oh. I don't know. I don't remember things so good. Oh. It's just because I was. Oh. Looking for treasure. Yes. But I was. I was just looking. Watching smile on you, brother. They said I did it. More than one. But I can't do 
remember things so good. Then they called me me, no. They called me. They called me a liar, Billy. Yes. They said I had to live here now. No. Oh. They gave me this letter. But I'm not good with words. Do you? Do you think you could read it for me? Uh huh. Marjorie sent this to Julius. I'm writing to you in relation to your incorrigible antisocial behavior arising fr from your obsession with an alleged lost treasure. While I am sympathetic to your plight and the passing of your guardian Hannibal some weeks ago, I wish to impress upon you an important message. The treasure you seek does not exist. Given your memory limitations, it seems likely you simply misremembered. More importantly, since you have on several occasions been caught trespassing, including around the cisterns which are strictly off limits to all citizens, I have reluctantly come to the conclusion that you are a liability to this community and must have your freedom limited lest you break the golden rule. It is my hope that this letter will assist you to remember why you are incarcerated should you experience further lapses in memory. What does it say? As Chad has pointed out, is a great example of games actually tackling ne neurodivergence. Mm -hmm. the magistrate wouldn't listen no matter what oh god really is that what about the rules I don't want everyone huh. to get in trouble because I was bad like, Great. No, I can live with that. I was about to say, do we have to throw for content on that regard? <laughs> you help make him magistrate. He can get me out of here, and I can give you the key to my treasure. Hannibal said it was in the cisterns. It's the bell. What it was, just that it was way up high and very precious. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. And Twilight Alchemist, thank you for the 35 bits and the tiny quirky. I appreciate it. Okay. Aquasia, we have things to talk about. Hello, Bay again. Did you find what you need? Uh, yes. And did you notice anything? A puppy? Yes. Yes. Did you happen to encounter a stranger in the forest before you arrived here? And did you happen to catch her name? I see. And was this stranger by any chance wearing a hood? Because I've seen her before. There's something I think you should see. I think you'd better find No, no, the wait, wait. Okay, 
Stage one, two, three. Okay. I don't think I have a way to stop him. Uh, that would just be throwing for content by letting him go off and do his thing and abusing the fact that we'd have time. There's a way of stopping him without the bow. If you if you think about it, think about what else happened at the same time. Um, I mean, there's there's the collapse of the thing. Right, just before then, there's the r temple collapse just around the corner. Yep. If he goes in there, he dies. Right, because it collapses on his face. Right. Uh, but in order to do make that happen, what's her face has to not go in there. Right. This is gonna be tricky. Help. Favia. You have to do something. The man arrived in the bars. A real nasty sort, with his face all covered up, and he's got a weapon. You have to do something, or he's gonna break the golden rule. Yes, yes. Thank you. He's still in there, somewhere. I have to hide. Find me in this empty shop no. when it's over. Yep. That's the one I said. That's the one I said last time, isn't it? That sure. Sure. What? Why? Just trust me, bro. Just, <laughs> just trust me. All right. Um. Fine. That worked. Just trust me, bro. Worked. <laughs> just trust me, bro. Worked. Just trust me. It's fine. All right, sir. I know exactly where your blue, where your multi-eyed man is. Stop right there. I am looking for Tiberius Quinctius Crispus, otherwise known as Quinctius. Uh huh. You Seems like we get a full Roman name, I think. Yeah. There's the lie, uh, or goes by Maliolus now. Uh, as much as I want to just get him killed. We'll do this. Thank you. For your service to the Empire, I'll let you live for now. But Fine. You make sure our I want your bow. Again. I want your bow after when we're done with this. Also, notably, lying to people does not break the golden rule. Stealing from people does. You're starting uh, to get a sense. It becomes quite important later. Uh -huh. though. To understand exactly the how ethics. the rule works, yeah. Or to think to think through the ethics of the rule. Yeah, it seems to be really concerned with material, but right, lying with intent to kill. It's quite a big one, you'd have thought. Manslaughter, almost. Filthy lying degenerate. Bonk. Hey, uh, mine. Thank you. Hunter as the arsonist and murderer, citizen from the Aventine. Yep. Mine. And one coin. Also, looting the dead is not breaking things. Right. Notably, um, Right, looting the dead doesn't break the golden rule. Uh, lying to people doesn't break... Yes, now they want me to continue with that for that. Uh, Fabia was in the bakery, right? That's the pottery yep. shop. Who's on the bakery? Hello. Hey, guess what? Baby. Yeah. We're fine. You... You took care of him. An accident? So... It's over? Oh, God. It's such a relief. I really thought we were all going to die. I... I do have a question, though. That shrine... 
the one I was going to hide in, did you know it was going to collapse? Uh, maybe. Really? Then how? Oh, I see. I should probably keep my big mouth shut then. Sorry. I promise, nobody else will ever know what you did. But I know. That was really clever. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. Oh, speaking of which, welcome. I'm Fabia. Sorry I was a bit... Okay. Need anything? Oh, there's not much to tell. I mostly just bake bread and try to help out where I can. Mm-hmm. I suppose it all started about eight months ago. I was living in Rome with my family when I got sick. Uh -huh. Terrible timing. My pa had just arranged a husband for me. A fisherman's son. I was about to meet him for the first time when I came down with an awful fever. Mm -hmm. I spent the next week in bed. Pa paid priests to make offerings to Asclepius, a white rooster, then a goat. But nothing worked. Mm -hmm. In the end, they decided I'd do better outside the city. I mean, given first century Rome, this is probably just true. <laughs> across the trapdoor temple and here I am. Oh yeah. I suppose you're right. I'm really pissed huh. about it. But the gods are mysterious and powerful. Who knows what their plans are for us? Okay. Alright. Thanks again for taking care of our problem. I won't forget it. The question is, right, does admitting to murder actually cause an issue? You there. A good question. I'm sorry to trouble Don't you think I tested that. I couldn't help but notice that fine bow you're carrying. No idea how you managed to get your hands on it, especially in the light of our dear old magistrate bang. Absolutely not. <laughs> Before you ask, no. The queen was trying to buy it from you. I have no use for a wooden bow myself. But I would like to propose a joint business venture of sorts. Do you have any idea how people here end up as golden statues? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> the lie is less, is more believable than that. And here I was thinking I was the only one to figure Wait, what? In any case, Decius, how did you figure this out? One or two of those arrows is enough to turn a full grown man into gold. Uh, do you... What? Of course, that is a travesty, a terrible, horrible waste of human life which has to be stopped. How did he figure it out? Transmute organic matter into gold. What could create infinite wealth? When Use your imagination. Golden animals, insects, trees, and plants. The Midas touch without the drawbacks. We are talking riches beyond imagining. And even if we were to split all those riches between the two of us, half of infinite wealth is still infinite. Interesting. No. <laughs> Are you interested or not? Oh, I'm not suggesting we use such a bow on people. There's no profit in breaking the golden rule. Excellent. So the first question is, how do we get our hands on one of those golden bows? Now, I have a plan. But first, tell me, are you familiar with the story of the goddess Diana? Yes. Good. Then none of this should be a surprise to you. Diana is our goddess of the hunt, the moon, uh -huh. and the Aren't they silver? It just so happens that there is a shrine of Diana in this very forum. Oh. A prominent statue of the goddess herself. And would you like to guess what she's holding in her hand? Precisely. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent in that temple staring at it, trying to figure out how to retrieve it without breaking, you know what? Oh, gods, no. If you tried that, we'll be dead within moments, I'm sure. No, here's what I propose. You give your vote to me. I cover it in a thin layer of gold leaf. Then you enter the shrine, etc. 
extinguish the braziers and under cover of darkness swap out the fake with the original. What? Exactly. It's more of a a trade. But make no mistake, this is a dangerous path, and there's no way of knowing where it will lead. But in my experience, all the best adventures begin with a risky first step. Now, you must have questions. Ask away. Just love the line. This is grossly unethical. <laughs> grossly unethical. Um because the gods would see you, of course. Hence, my proposal. I'm more of an ideas man, whereas you're obviously the more resourceful and heroic type. I have complete what? confidence in you. When Prometheus stole fire from the gods and became a hero to all mankind, no, no, Decius. Only because he was silly enough to get caught. <laughs> Tip the internal logic of characters I really like in this game as well. Uh, Each just, character has their own internal yeah. logic, just like Maliolus's ones about freedom and politics and breaking the rule. Decius has this internal you know, logic that holds to his worldview. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. If you don't like action or horror elements, feel free to decline. So that means that this is actually a choice that affects, like, meaningfully affects, uh, the trajectory of the game at large. Yep, you could have, I'm just trying to think it through, I think you could complete it, or at least complete You could get, one end, obviously you can get to endings. an ending, some combination of endings without it, but, I mean, that's going to screw up the entire trajectory of the game. Oh god, Chad is noting that this guy sounds exactly like Patches from Dark Souls. <laughs> he does. He sounds exactly like Patches. Now I've gone and unlocked the Shrine of Diana for you, so as quick as you can, head on inside. It's just at the end of the street on the left. May the gods not watch over you. Love it. Maybe Mercury could watch over us? I don't know. <laughs> or Loki. <laughs> Right yeah, oh yeah, let's just break the path here. <laughs> I will try to help you. I don't think I trust... Goodbye. Goodbye. That's a lot of bees. I'm not thinking of Eddie Izzard here. Absolutely not. And yet you did. And now here we are. He out here and you in there. Until you get He's just patches. He's just patches. No, technically, I never said that. I said if we were to split all those switches between the two of us, infinite world would be still infinite. It's hardly my fault if you can't tell the difference between a hypothetical and a promise now, is it? All hail, uh, trusty patches. Literally, he just patches, just patches. This. <laughs> and Wolfie is celebrating patches with five tier one gifted subs. I super appreciate it. You're just gonna have to take your chances, I'm afraid. Bye -bye. Now, and don't even think about giving me the fake one. I'll recognize my own handiwork. I would reconsider my position quickly. Sure, if you noticed, but you're stuck in there with a hornet's nest, and they can be rather aggressive to all intruders. You know, some say it takes 27 hornet stings to kill a but I always wondered how anyone could have known that. Let's find out if they were right, shall we? Interesting. Uh, I don't know how, how the bow. What else can I shoot at? Here's the question, right? What else can I shoot at? Because obviously I could just shoot this. 
But it's non aggressive. Does that not light the. Oh, uh, I can't light the arrow on fire. I can shoot flaming arrows through it, though. Potentially. Yes, what Destiny about? tried not to be the oracle here and saying, do this, do that. Uh-huh. I The thing is, right, I could just shoot the nest. Oh, it turns it into gold. Of course, it's a golden... It's a... It's a golden bow. I forgot that it turns things into gold instead of, uh, you know, just shooting it, which would just irritate everybody. More arrows, thank you. And now we have to make our way back around into the city. So if this isn't the treasure up here... Ooh, 112 denarii, thank you. Looting the dead continues to not be a problem. Also, once again, one of our first mentions of, you know, actual... Oh... That's clever. I, mean, I know, I really like this mechanic. It's a very clever way of extending the kind of reality of the game. Oh, that's clever. There's not many game mechanics that... Again, it's like, it's like the portal gun. It's something that changes the material world around you. Yes. Anytime it does that, it's a good, a good time. Well, uh, rest in, rest in peace, skeleton. Don't give up. My beloved Galatea, I write this so that one day, when we're finally together, you will understand what I've done and why I had to do it. The others will call me mad or a monster, but I don't care what they think. Everything I'm doing here, I'm doing for you. I'll start at the beginning. Soon after my arrival here, as I walk down a corridor lined with golden statues, I thought I heard a whisper behind me. A rasp of air, as if vocal cords of metal strained to say a word or two. I tried to dismiss the idea, tried to concentrate on my work as the city's medic, but that tortured whisper haunted me. Weeks later, in the hallway to the bathhouse, I heard it again and found myself drawn to the statue of the woman wearing a stone. Her face was contorted in anguish and fear, and disturbingly, it was as if she was looking right at me. As I walked past her, I heard that strange whisper again, and turning back, I discovered that even though I had been, that she was still looking right into my soul. ASX Golden Vines. Mm-hmm. This was no statue. This was a woman trapped within that golden prison. Naturally, I told the others that when I could not reproduce the results of my experiment, they would not believe me. But from that moment on, I knew the full horror of this place. Immobilized within these statues, I... Our inconvenient save point. Our inconvenient loading zones. Living human beings. Huh. It was that day, my love, that my heart broke. Oh. There's a, just a load. There's just a whole loading zone right there all the time. Okay. I thought that was a one-time loading zone and not an all-the-time loading zone. Okay. Good to know. Oh, and oh, now okay. we're in the palace. Oh, awesome. Now let yep. me guess, this has... These are all bards, so I can't use that usefully. I would love to get some sort of way in that doesn't rely on... You know, my ability or inability... To... Uh, steal the golden bow competently.
Hmm. God, these... No. Don't... Don't be like that. <laughs> Nothing's... They're all like that. Nothing said you had to be like that. I love to use the purple marble. There's a lot of that in... Oh, yep. Yeah. Kill that. Rolled. Sniped at the last moment. Okay, I'm going to switch to mouse and keyboard because I need the more precise aim. That's zooming in. Left click is our attack. Control is sneak. Phoenician? Why are there Phoenician clay tablets? Pointers. I recognize that lead ring. Those are Roman still. That missed? Heck. They take two shots if you hit them on the body or one shot on the head. Gotcha. Peeled statue. You know, I hate that right, that statement. But they are peeled. Peel. Okay, that's not precise. Got him. I hate that description of peeled. Nope. Mm-mm. It so, just makes you think of an apple. And a the, peeler. Yep. That's a human. Yep. Okay, that's in Greek. Okay. Another thing that this one, do this game does extremely well is it just this linguistic landscape, right? The fact that you mm. know the identifiable things are actually identifiable as things. Yeah, and it, it it goes it goes to the sort of the familiar, but it, but does it sort of you know, interestingly. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay, you've not been peeled, you've not been peeled. You're just looking around. I don't like the, the just looking around. Just looking around doesn't make sense. Oh. I missed? That also missed? There we go. Well then. Oh, I could have just turned the whole thing as long as they were standing up still. Could have yeah. just kept doing that. Instead of using arrows on them, lock them in place. That's the one. But that's notably not that. Also, navy is evil? Question mark? Okay, looting from the golden is still not not a sin. God, this is horrifying. I okay, the whole mood of this place has changed and I'm suddenly know, like very spooked. Uh -huh. Yeah, halfway through the game it does just take this kind of it just pivots. And I didn't even talk to... I didn't even talk to... What's her face? But it, it pivots in the, only in the sense that... Yeah, the, the statues were already there, so it was already... Exactly. It was already horrific. It's just... It just leans into that. It t turns that up 10%. By saying, you know... Someone... Who is crazy enough to just... Go for it. Heck. Question mark? Again. Question mark? That wasn't a headshot? I disagree, game. 
That's okay. <laughs> Good lord. Okay, I just all coherent thought just went poof because oh boy spooky. <laughs> it's like history just goes out the window because you're fighting peeled statues. Exactly. That was a clean hit. That's, oh, I hit the I hit the wrong thing. What? I think there's only so much range. Before it becomes. That's a lot of thing. Yeah, we're just focused on getting the body shot. Again, disagree. Could I block them you in can, place? You could do something quite fun. You can, if you hold off firing on that one, uh -huh. by kicking one of the statues. Oh, I just crunch him. I just crunch the peeled statue. Oh, that's hysterical. 10 out of 10. No comments. Well done. And 50 denarii and 10 fledged arrows makes up the difference of what I spent. So, that's fine. Go away. <laughs> that is a very fun kick. Walk to the boot. I mean, I don't like the crunch. Uh, in that the crunch is, uh, moral, ow, morally depressing. Because, uh, re-entrapping people who have been peeled is, uh, one thing. But just crunching their bones is kind of a different thing. Do you say thank you when you shoot them with a the golden arrow, but not when you kick them? Exactly. After you've, like, smushed their face, uh, smushed all of their bones, they do not thank you for it. It also doesn't feel good that, you know, these guys are all... That's a pretty tragic... And I think it's quite nice, it is definitely a modern horror sort of aspect going on here. A little bit gothic-y horror as well, because there's a kind of sense of... Yeah. Is that going on as well with me, me, me. Ma but um yeah maybe being also, like maybe yeah, that's it but i i do think there's a you could start sort of pulling at the reception again of, of some of some of the classical stories i mean she, she's already referenced galatea but there's kind of there are little horror elements to some of those metamorphoses and this one i think just takes that sort of metamorphoses horror to to a more recognizable uh-huh Dang. Uh, three peeled statues. No good way to get into a position with four peeled statues. Nothing to drop on their face. Try shooting the... The pot? I just turned that to gold too. That's not helpful. Out of the way! Ow. Don't worry, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine, this is all fine, this is all fine. Everything's fine. Ow. Everything's not fine. I'm gonna die. That's alright. Uh, that's alright. I've got a strat. I've got a strat. Um, the strat has two steps. Um, the first strat is shoot the one that's in the, in the courtyard. Luckily, they're being oh, very okay. generous with the quantity of save. But where's my bow? <laughs> where's my bow? Flashlight. <laughs> Hello, flashlight. There's my bow. So I think you can fire that. Yeah, there you go. And then knock the... Yes, yes. Oh yeah, that lures them all. And then when I lure them all, I turn them all into gold. Yep. yep. Sir. Sir, please. Alright, well, uh, they hate it here as much as I hate it here, so as long as everyone hates it here, we're fine. <laughs> we're on the same page. 
Exactly, everyone hates it here. Uh, so don't worry about it. What an interesting shift. That gets even more gruesome. Uh, Tools for the long and difficult task ahead. Barred the doors to this place and set to work. It's a nice sort of reinterpretation of the Galatea myth. Yeah, it is. I, I love, right, uh, obviously being set in the first century, right, that gives them access to a lot of Roman lit. Mm. I love the, the thematic choices, I guess. Right, really, we've not seen all that much classical myth uh, being referenced. But anywhere, we yeah, have, like, relevant. Sisyphus. We have Ovid. Uh, and That's we have... Barcus and Philemon's story. Exactly. Isn't that also in the Metamorphoses, by the way? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, right, we have these... Oh, heck. Heck. Uh, but we don't actually have a ton of... Uh, I guess... Well, nice environmental storytelling we created there. <laughs> yes. Oops. That was almost intentional. Um, did we also had Virgil reference, didn't we? Have we had Virgil reference um, yet? Kind of by extent when talking to um, Sentius. Yeah. I'll talk about it later. What's it's more of the. Ah, we're that supposed to technically be climbing. I understand. But, um, there is one kind of glaring omission, which is an interesting omission. Oh? Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about it, as I said, we'll talk about it in a moment when it's relevant. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Spoilers. Yep. Oh. Well, we had, like, Diana being referenced as Underworld, which is... Chan was pointing out that that was funky. I don't know if that's actually funky. That's just kind of funky. Kill me. Kill me. 
Sorry. I am not going to kill you. You'll need them all to suffer. I don't have the arrows to kill everybody. God, this palace is absolutely horrifying. I mean, materially, it's gorgeous. I'm just not enjoying <laughs> any of the materiality of it, because, um... I like that the game lets you sort of casually walk through the rest of the city and you're like, you can enjoy this, and then it <laughs> traps you in a place where it's like, you're gonna hate this. It's beautiful. I hate everything about it. I don't... Why do I have... Uh... Get over here. Heck. No, no, no. Flawless. Nice. That worked perfectly. I have no... I definitely did throw an arrow oh. into... Into the oh, edge of the edge. stupid thing. Good lord. Like, bravo. Bravo to this game for, like, creating an other, like, an instantaneous mood shift. Because I'm no, I'm no spook. Even with the music as well. Yeah. But, like, yeah, music is something I want to talk about. Because the music, right, on the title screen was weird. Because it's, like, standard action adventure music. I hate her. I really hate her. Justifiable, I think. Oh. Evidently, his death didn't break the golden rule. Yeah, I'm still s s trying to figure out the ethics to this, because there is clearly some sort of logic. It's like. Wait, what can I actually shoot in here? What does... What good does shooting that bottle do me? 
Is it just that I lured something out so I could get an angle on it? You recommend saving here. Well, that's... that's... <laughs> a helpful note, isn't it? Well, what is the ethics of this agency? Also... Now, given... depending on which way you... Uh, on how you consider agency... Uh... I'd look at other saved. The fact that we are... No. Oh. Uh-uh. I do not want to get closer. Noted. And you must be the wretched snake who broke into my past uh -huh. and disturbed my experiments. And worst of uh -huh. all, look at what you made me do to her. This never would have happened if you just stayed away. You're mm, going to it. The thing is, I don't think she cares about that. I feel like I don't... I feel like she doesn't care about the fact that... We're both going to die if she does that. Warning you all to leave me alone. And I didn't come here voluntarily. Experiments in peace for her. And now look at her. You made me turn the most beautiful woman I've ever seen into this. Look at her. She's in agony. All I wanted was to spend my last moments with her. To see her beautiful face. To hear her speak freely. Instead of in those cryptic whispers. But as soon as I began my work. Voices sound the same when they whisper, but now that I think about it, they were all benevolent and seemed to share a common knowledge. But if these bodies are mere conduits for that one voice, then this body is nobody, and everything I've done here was. was. Wait, I see what you're doing. You're trying to steal her away from me. What? Man. Until I've done all the hard work, then swoop in. Is that it? Liar. You tried to steal her away from me. And now look what you made me do. Ma'am. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't feel you too. What? What are you talking about? Wait. So you're saying you weren't coming for us. So I did all this. I ruined her. For nothing. Uh -huh. What have I done? Oh God, he's sick. I am. I can't bear the thought of her being like this. I'm in so much pain. Yep. It's the air coming into contact with my flesh. It's agonizing for them. Science. But the only way to fix it will be to break the golden rule. No, no. And let it run its course. At least that way she'll be golden again. And we wait, together. Wait, wait, wait. No. Um. No. It's too late. The 
There's nothing you can do. I have to do this. No. I'm sorry. Damn it. What? How? Really? I'm not sure I believe you. <sighs> so <I> stress. <laughs> I mean, I've turned pretty much out of when to go. What can be done for them? I've tried everything I can. I fear the only one capable of releasing them properly is whichever god doomed them in the first place. In any case, I must mm -hmm. honor our bargain. Mm -hmm. The treatment for rheumatism is willow bark. I believe there's a bargain already in the shrine of Apollo. I feel like we could have guessed this one. Please leave. The door here leads out onto the palace balcony. You should be able to make your way down from there. Go. And never return. I don't intend on it. What if I like here is something that other people have commented on in reviews of the game, but it's like the, the boss fights are dialogue fights. Yeah. And whereas in other games your ability to convince what? and are you still here? um you know, bargain with other people comes as a result of, you know, investing in a skill. Yes. In charisma or charm or something. But what I really like about here is that it, it does rely on you, like you were doing at the start there, working out what a character would feel about a certain conversation choice. Exactly. And work out if that is indeed the way to convince them not to do something, or to see a different point of view. Yep. Because in some important ways, it's not late. That's quite an impressive bow you have there. Just like Diana. Don't worry about it. Aquisha, you you don't need to worry about it. Um Huh. Okay. So Bathhouse. I think you need to go with her. Fine. Um yeah. What's what's odd is right. The characters all ha clearly have thoughts on what and how they want to do things, um, and obviously our accumulated knowledge works that way. It kind of carries over, and we like add our agency or other people's agency to tell us or not tell us to our own. I don't know. Right? Agency is such an odd concept with this. Because this is a, a weird historical game where we, like, we have agency, but it's not the agency we expect from games. Yes, and it's more the, it intersects with the historical setting oddly. Right, uh, not badly, just... I guess it intersects in... Huh. How do I want to explore this thought? I was about to say it almost sounds like it almost feels like we have agency in the way that the historian has agency over the past, and that yeah, we can. That, I think that comes out later on a little bit in some of the dialogue choices. Yeah, like um, we accumulate multiple people's lived experiences and collate them to create an image of the past, which, because this is a game is then applied to our ability to affect the narrative and achieve a desired outcome. Right, yeah, so you're rereading sources and living these internal lives of different characterizations of people from the past in order to understand their lives enough to, to construct a, a coherent narrative. It's a nice reading of it. I also quite like the sort of, if you think about it more from the time loop angle, mm -hmm. you've got the sense that you have limited power but also Exactly. Endless time to work out what is really going on and where you can materially make a difference rather than being forced along a linear plot line 
towards X outcome, um, even if there's choices along the way. Yeah. I take it you've cleared the way to the bars? I have. Follow me. But don't think too closely. We can't have people thinking we're bathing together. Uh-huh. God forbid. We're just gonna be suspicious and go this way. See? Flawless. And now we're back to it being happy and cheerful fun times. <laughs> Not for all the golden statues everywhere still. Don't worry about it. And just the reminder is the fact that there are people trapped in gold who will murder us all at the slightest transgression. I'm sure that's fine. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. And, uh, the cisterns uh, presumably have peeled statues too, because I don't. There's nothing else in the world to date that can actually explain how Hannibal got his face eaten. That's a right. Nothing good else. Assumption. Nothing else in this world demonstrates that. Okay, what are you doing way over here? Also, can I swim? I have an air bar. I have a gorgeous air bar. Before you came here, you became a performance swimmer. Exactly. <laughs> Able to hold your breath for it. A hot second. Excellent. And we'll just like walk up the stairs underwater, as you do. Anyway. Oh, this is where we started, and this is where she takes you. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Here. Look down at the bottom of the box. It's a little hard to make out in this light. If only we could see. Oh, what a marvelous lamp. But do you see uh -huh. somebody waking up by a river in a forest to find a hooded figure with a coin? Mm -hmm. Just as you described it. Only I think I know who that stranger is. Caron, the ferryman of the yep. dead. Caron, who in exchange for the right Helps the souls of the newly deceased cross the Styx, the river that separates the land of the living from the land of the dead. When I dragged you out of the river, I thought you were never going to wake up. I checked your pockets for ID, but all I found was some loose change. Feels like I've spent my whole life <laughs> dead in jail. <laughs> oh no, it's brilliant. <laughs> Great. It's a great reveal. I genuinely thought it was Dionysus for a little while because he is that kind of figure that you could really imagine having been behind such a... Mm -hmm. Not only because he was behind the Midas touch anyway, but because it is that kind of mercurial god. You could imagine having some kind of bizarre grudge and following it through to its conclusion, but I really like this twist. Yeah, I, I, I also super like this twist. Uh, I have odd feelings about it being right, Pluton being, uh, it makes total sense, obviously, right, that with the golden rule being the thing that, like, passes judgment upon people in the halls of Pluto, and therefore Tartarus is quite literal in this case, that this, I guess, not Elysium, but Actually, no, I'll, I'll go there. This Elysium is then also Tartarus, and it's just whether or not you've been imprisoned for breaking the rules of Elysium. So that's a good reading. I hadn't read it that, in that way. I was 
when when I went through this this stage and had a twist, I was still trying to piece together how how that golden rule provided agency within mm -hmm. in the underworld. So yeah. People are living out their lives here. Um, it does make more. They, there is a further twist to that. Um, yeah. But I like your reading of it. Thanks. Yeah, it's it's odd though because right Elysium in Roman under Roman and Greek underworld is the place where heroes go, the place where people who are good at doing violence go. And so there's a little bit of this paradise, the idea of the utopia and the modern imposition of the utopia as crucial for our understanding of this underworld and our picturing of it as Elysium. Yeah, I can see that. And there's, there has been a kind of discussion with some of the characters about how the Golden Rule has the potential to create a utopia. Yes. But of course, we've also seen how that is very much undermined mm -hmm. through various loopholes. The characters taking advantage. Yeah, so many loopholes. Uh, I still don't really have a good sense of how the ethics of it work. Right? Because it seems to be... Right, the depriving of liberty doesn't do it. The... Peeling of people. The peeling, the interacting or man manipulating or abusing the dead and golden does not do it. Harm to self does not do it. Drawing. Tricking someone into enacting their own demise doesn't do it. But trespassing on Entering someone's room after the ask you not to does. Attacking someone does. And that's about it. That's all I know for sure does it. Right? Literally attacking someone who is not already dead or golden. Or entering someone's room when they've asked you not to. Hold all those thoughts because it will become significant later. Yes. Uh -huh. But it was also possible for the living to reach it without dying, if they were particularly fearless. So I'm afraid I don't know. Exciting. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting you're not from here. If you were Roman, or even Greek, you would know these stories. I know these stories, don't worry, I'm an archie. Hey! hey. <laughs> there they are. Don't worry, no, look, video game. Hades has already come out, we've got this. Zagreus when you need him. Exactly. Look, we, we already have Boldy in this game, we just haven't given his name yet. Interesting listening to all the, the stories. Yeah. Second time round, because they seem very obviously to point towards death, whereas I didn't get it the first time. Uh, yeah, I got started to have a 
inkling, but I didn't. Uh huh. Put it together. Yeah. Theseus, Heracles. Oh, no. Okay. Sisyphus. And Aeneas. This is the glaring omission. Where's Odysseus? Yeah. I can yeah. tell. I'll go on. I'll talk about it in a minute. But also, Sisyphus didn't escape. He does, and then he goes back. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, he does, and then he gets. Oh right, he escapes, and then he dies again. Uh huh. He gets punished. Yeah. Uh huh. Um. Gotcha. Fair. You may refer to him as Pluto, if you wish, but you'll only be calling attention to yourself. Do so at your own peril. Uh huh. You shall not be named. Exactly. Is everyone so blunt where you're from? Yes. That option would be the boldest, but also the only way to learn uh -huh. the truth about the golden rule, and maybe even put an end to it. Uh huh. I do have a godly weapon, sort of. Forgive my candor, but you are no Hercules. Ouch. Are you telling me that you can? Well, don't pretend to understand exactly well. what that means. But if that's true, then perhaps you stand a chance. So, if you want to confront him, I'll help you as much as I can. Who knows? Perhaps your name will be uttered in the same sense. <laughs> Temple. Uh huh. Uh huh. The upper cistern. The cisterns get us the plaques. The plaques get the doors open. What a weird dedication to have an Egyptian symbol to a Greek god. You'll find them all over Rome. But of course they were looted from Egypt many years ago. <laughs> it seems one of them made its way here too, although how is a mystery. However, this one is oh. unusual in that each of the interesting. interesting, interesting, interesting. Roman, Greek, <laughs> Egyptian. If you're alright with it, we're going to check that fourth side, uh, uh, see if I can identify it, and then we'll call the stream. Uh, we have to... We need to find all of these people. Uh-huh. Oops. So we need to talk to a Christian. Christian. Back into this. Yep. So we need to talk to a Christian. Good thing we know who it is. To Georgius. Ask Dooley about the Greek plaque. Perhaps Kabash, our 
Egyptian resident. Break into the. Unfortunately, he disappeared weeks ago. But I did hear Aurelia is peddling rumors about him at the time. So perhaps you could talk to her, or just take a look in his room. Okay. And the unknown. Okay. Well, I think I know what our job is next week. Fetch <laughs> quest. Fetch quest. We could also. We could also do this, but this seems less fun. Do you know? Yeah, I know the story. I appreciate that they are. I appreciate that they are elaborating on it. But if you know already know the story, then. Yes. I mean, given that it's a ritual to the Proserpina that presumably causes the time loop in the first place, yes. We'll take all of them. We'll take all the gods if we can get them. What are you talking about? But it's nice now that now that we we know we're all in the underworld. Again, it's such a sort of recurring theme in literature. Um, not only from all of the, the ancient epics and tragedies, but the going through you know to yes, Hunter's Inferno, where Virgil's your guide. You know, there's such a strong reception at play here. Exactly. What seems to be odd about this, and I think I think I could argue why. Is mm -hmm. they miss out Odysseus, um, who's of course you know pretty much the earliest to go to the underworld and back. But for him, it's not the underworld in inverted commas. Like the underworld they're drawing on here is a particular rendering of the underworld uh -huh. that is more from kind of the Aeneid onwards, where it is a sort of cave underground, um, and there is the River Styx and Charon and you know Dido's across the river and. Um, you know, it's that sort of space, which is, which is, you know, interesting here because it's set in Rome and we're getting it sort of through that lens. What I find interesting about the Odyssey in relation to all of this is that the, the other world wasn't so much the underworld as much as the other world. It was yes. a place over there, which you often got to by sailing a long distance, going you know, to the other end of the ocean or across rivers. Mm -hmm. or, and, and it was a, a, an, an other place rather than an under place. So the reception is the the world we get here is is again a bit like the oracle we were talking about it's a to, for the point of the plot it is a necessary simplification of some of the ideas of um the afterlife that are received um both in greece and rome but also in egypt as well because we're gonna see more of that soon and indeed other cultures as well so it's i quite i quite like what it does here but again mm -hmm. it sort of it has to intentionally miss out some things that don't quite fit with that Yes. Imagining of the underworld. Yep. Okay, well. Well, you look at that. Presumably this is our Roman... 
And then we got the slightly older Greek layer. And then we have a obviously Egyptian layer. And then something that's almost too faded to see. But uh is still cuneiform. So we're operating in somewhere between Acad Acadian and Sumerian. Or Babylon, or oh, something, right? Mesopotamia, right? I think we can, at this point, just layer it generically to Mesopotamia. Which means that it's almost time to get to the philosophy of history part of it. Which is exciting. God, so much to do here. Livia, how are you feeling? Also, there aren't that many citizens to vote. I'll have to... There's an entire, like, election subplot so that I don't know that we'll actually do. Yes, yes. Lets out his three bones, I suppose we'll actually start here next time. Because we can start off with the Egyptian plaque and this. That's a good point. Uh, the election plot comes tied into what we're about to do and that's not really giving anything away because shocking things start to converge everything as we would have to everything is i think happening real quick so uh you know we may actually end up starting this and then or start this and then reset the loop regardless though we are unfortunately out of time and so we will have to call it here uh, there is so much more we can still talk about. We could be doing this all day. We've got to call it somewhere. Um, so, I hope you all very much enjoyed this. Uh, big thanks to our patrons, as always, who made this possible. And big thanks again to uh, Richard for coming and joining us. Chat, let's give a big round of, of applause for it. God, I was not expecting the horror turn. I was not expecting things to go quite that spooky, quite that fast. I'll be honest. The rest of it I actually uh, did sort of know, right? Firstly, because the Underworld stuff is not subtle if you know what you're looking for. And secondly, we actually are coming... Some of the stuff in the cisterns are things I actually have seen before in this game. So, I knew I knew some of the things were coming, just not exactly how we'd get there. Uh, but yeah, we there's just so much. Uh, do you have any final thoughts on today's stream and what we covered? Sorry, say that again? Do you have any final thoughts on today's stream? Uh, no, I think that is nice to close on that point about the underworld being this very flexible space in yeah. the imagination. And in order to tell a coherent story about it, you have to actually <laughs> put aside some versions in order to focus on, on another. But um, I do think that the game plays very nicely with that rich tradition, mm -hmm. thinking about the afterlife. I, I think so too. Uh, It'll be exciting next time because I want to talk uh, a lot more like big theory of history because I know, obviously, now that we've identified the fact that we have literally stacked layers uh, in the four tablets representing four progressively older cultures, there's some philosophy of history stuff that I think we're going to get into next time as we hopefully will be able to finish up the game. Um, but. So I hope you all join us for that. That'll actually be next Monday, not next not next Tuesday. Uh, so mark that in your calendars, uh, and we'll be as soon as we will see how far we can get. And if there has to be one emergency wrap up, we'll figure that out. Uh, otherwise, uh, coming up in the rest of this week, we do of course have Elden Ring uh, coming up on Thursday. Uh, which I'm going to be very angry at the game. I've been very complimentary of the game. I'm going to be very angry at the game for a bit. Because, uh, oh boy, when you ask the same questions about agency uh, and the portrayal of non-player entities as agents who can have influence, things look a lot less pretty. And then uh, on Sunday, there will be more Grey Ace Attorney Chronicles. So, as always, a wide array of historical and historical adjacent games. But, uh, until next time, this has been Leo History, playing The Forgotten City. So I hope you all have a good rest of your evening, a good rest of your week. All right. Bye-bye. Take care, everyone.